Okay, yo, how you feeling? I'm feeling tight. <laughs> I basically am super tense, only on the right side of my back, and I can't really, ow, I can't really extend my right arm. This side feels 20. <laughs> But I'm okay to do this interview because I want to tell you about the Tiffany box cake I made. People love Tiffany boxes, don't you find? Like they keep the box. Yeah. To make this cake, I baked eight pounds of my ultimate chocolate cake in two square pans. After leveling them, I made sure to save my humps because I think I have enough humps to make a second little cake. I don't know why I just like torturing it. Even though I baked two 10 inch cake pans, I actually decided I wanted the box to be eight inches. Why? <laughs> because the lid of the box is gonna be a styrofoam dummy. They were out of 10 inch dummies. <laughs> so I had to get eight and nine just in case. Oh, okay. So now the box has to be small. You can't have a lid that's smaller than the box. That defeats the purpose, that's right? That's not a box. That's a use, <laughs> useless box, really. Then the box becomes like a lid holder. And now my humps, I'm going to level them and cut each hump down to four inches square. So I'll make a little box. Now it's time to simple syrup all four layers of my cake. I told Sir Squeeze, this is gonna be a Tiffany box. It has to be like a luxurious, fully even simple syrup. Now it's time to fill and stack my two cakes. I'm gonna stack each cake on a board that's cut to its size. And then I crumb coat and chill both cakes. Now it's time to ice the cakes again and chill. It helps to use a bench scraper when you're icing cakes like this because it's a box, so it's really important that we keep our sides and our corners as straight as possible. Once you're happy with the ice, put it in the fridge. Um, I always recommend with square cakes, we can go back, even sometimes round cakes, even any cake really. Whenever you're not happy with the icing, the secret is to chill it and then just touch up as you need to, sort of build up the buttercream. Now I'm gonna roll out my Tiffany Blue fondant and I'm gonna roll it out in panels and again, making sure that my panels are high enough for the sides of each one of my cakes as well as long enough and then chill the fondant for a bit. This will make it easier to apply. I also just remembered that in year one, I would really, really stress about telling you guys that I chilled fondant. I had my fridge altered specifically for cake decorating. So there's like a humidity monitor, whereas if you do this at home, putting fondant in your fridge sometimes, especially if you live in a warm climate, will make it sweat. In the meantime, while my fondant slabs are chilling, I am going to cover a nine inch round, no, <laughs> a nine inch square. That would be an even odder box, right? Like a square box with a round lid. Now I'm gonna roll out my Tiffany Blue fondant, drape it over the styrofoam dummy, and then use a fondant smoother to help smooth it in place, get out all the air bubbles, smooth it down the sides. I'm gonna trim away the excess at the bottom, but not flush to the dummy because what I wanna do is flip it over and then trim it flush while it's upside down. And now the most important thing is to put this lid aside to dry outside of the fridge because of course the logo will go on top of this lid and the firmer the fondant is, the easier it will be for me to write the logo on top. So I'm gonna start covering my cakes. I'm very excited. It doesn't matter which one I start with. For the clothes box, I need to measure the height of my cake around all four sides, and then I pick whichever side is the highest. Even though the cake looks straight, it might be like 1 16th of an inch higher along one side. I cut all my slabs to that height, and then I cover two opposite sides at a time, smoothing the fondant on the cake, and then trimming it flush to the sides of the cake with a very sharp paring knife. And then I cover the two opposite sides and do the same thing. Once I've covered all four sides of the smaller four inch cake, if there's a valley at the top of the cake, in my case there was, then I fill that in nice and flush at the top with a little Italian meringue buttercream. And I just love doing that. There's something about doing this that makes me so happy. <laughs> For the open box, I make sure to remember that I need a lip. 
that's what's going to make the box look open. So I decide how tall I want it and then I cut all my slabs to that height and trim the fun flesh. Yo, I just want to commend you on keeping one side absolutely I, frozen <laughs> and the other side is really animated. I have my right hand tucked under my thigh <laughs> to stop myself from trying to move my arm. Like lifting, lifting my cup hurts. <laughs> Putting my hair, this, I was like, I don't even care how messy my curls are because the thought of tying a ponytail is so painful. I'm like, this is it, this is my head. Take it's look, it. It's looking great. Take it. Glad my hair is cooperating today. Now I can cover the top of this four inch cake because this is a closed box, so I'm gonna create the lid right on the cake. I roll out my Tiffany blue fondant, drape it over the cake and very quickly I work to smooth it. And why I say very quickly is because the corners, because the corners are sharp, just like they should be, um, sometimes the fondant pulls and wants to tear there. That's why you don't want to give it the time. You want to get the air off the top and then smooth down the sides as quickly as you can. And then trim away the excess and pop it in the fridge because we have to trim the lid perfectly and I find when my fondant is chilled, that's easier to do. That's why I like my fridge. I can't believe I was ever worried about talking about it. I can't believe you were ashamed of talking about it. I her. know, <laughs> she's my everything. So my boxes, uh, they're looking boxy. But what's inside the box, yo? Exactly. I asked Olivia and Shelly, two How to Cake It team members, what the most popular Tiffany item is, and they thought it was the key necklace. So to form the heart part of the key, I used a heart mold that I have, and I just pressed uh, my gray gum paste into that mold. Now I have to work on, I, I guess it's called the stem of the key, I have no idea. I'm going to use a lollipop stick, cut to size, and then I'm going to roll the gray gum paste thin, surround the lollipop stick with it, roll it on the counter to smooth it out, trim away the excess. I wanna leave like about a half inch of the stick exposed, and this part will be pushed into the heart. Now I need to make the bottom portion of the key, and for this I had, I don't know why I did this, I just thought it would work. I have a mold that looks like a rectangle gem, so I pressed the gum paste in there, and then I sort of used a small rolling pin to roll it out thinner and wrapped that around the end of the key. The next two things I need to make are hmm, the little, I don't know what you call it, but at the top of the heart, there's the little, this thing, <laughs> that thing. I roll in a little cord of my gray gum paste and form it to fit the heart. And then I also have to make a loop because the chain goes through a loop. And you wanna set all these pieces aside to dry on their own. I'm not done, because I need a chain. So thank goodness one of my molds has like a beaded um, strand. So I'm going to use that. Rolling my gum paste into a cord, pressing it into that part of the mold, and then you can pull it out of the mold. I wanted to separate the beads just a bit, so I used a couple of toothpicks to squeeze in between each bead. That was difficult because it just wants to break. Yeah, <laughs> yes, lots of fun. I mean, it also sounds like exactly what would lead to an upper back injury. <laughs> so I need to let all these parts of my key necklace dry on their own and once they're dry I'm going to paint them with some silver luster dust. You might need to do several coats. This is why I'm always picking gold, okay? Because the truth is that gold luster dust is just always more brilliant than silver. The silver, it's shiny but it always looks a bit gray to me. It drives me insane. And then I went on the Tiffany site after. Do you know that they make it in gold? <laughs> <laughs> Except all the pictures of the ones Olivia had and she sent me were silver. So I was like, okay, yeah. I bet you silver's more popular. So for the ribbon, I'm rolling white gum paste as thin as I can. This is why my back hurts. The, the more fondant or gum paste you roll out, the more strength you need to get it thin. So I cut out bands of equal width. And then what I do is I glue them 
to the box. I love wrapping gifts and tying bows. Yes. I love it. Now I can make the bow loops and tails. I'm going to make two loops by cutting two bands, pinching either end of the band, and folding it on top of each other. This is integral to Tiffany, because not only do you get a nice box, they tie a white satin ribbon around. If you want to stop your bow loops from collapsing, you can roll up some paper towel and just tuck it in. And I am going to make ribbon for my open box, but I want it to look like it's been removed from the box. So I roll out more gum paste, nice and thin, cut my strands, and then I just let it dry in different formations. My ribbon right now is just white and it's kind of matte. It doesn't look satiny enough. So to make it look satin, I'm using a luster dust called Satin White. <laughs> Can you believe that? The little box is decorated fully, which means I need to paint the ribbon while it's on the cake. So just really carefully paint up the sides of all four bands, paint the loops, paint inside the loops, paint the center, the tails, all of it. It's a nice blue box with white satin ribbon, but it needs to say Tiffany. So I've printed out a Tiffany & Co logo. I enlarged it to be the right size for the lid that I made. And now what I'm going to do is lay that logo on top and sort of just trace over it with a pencil so that I can see a faint indent in the fondant below. Now I'm going to use a black food coloring marker to draw the letters onto the top of the cake or the lid. Now before I give you this amazing Valentine's Day gift, because I love you guys, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification. <laughs> See, this hand is useless. It doesn't even know how to avoid my hair. I think your hair was just trying to hit the notification. Right, right, right. I knew that for the cotton in the box, I wanted to use white cotton candy. Oh no. It doesn't quite look like the cotton, but it's close enough. Try and find white, white cotton candy. <laughs> You'd think they'd make more white cotton candy in winter. Yes, everyone tried, Jocelyn. <laughs> I tried. I went to like four different stores. Orhan tried. We looked online. We looked on Amazon. <laughs> Shelly found a store in Mississauga that had it, and we couriered white cotton candy. I bet you the courier costed more than the cotton candy. I'm willing to place bets. <laughs> Worth it. What I'm going to do is take this white cotton candy and try and lay it out like a square of cotton. So I'm taking an eight inch cake pen and I'm going to just lay the cotton candy inside and then press it down with a four inch square cake pen. Once that cotton candy touches the cake, the moisture from the buttercream is just going to eat away at the cotton candy. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, wafer paper, because I have wafer paper. So what I did is I cut a square of wafer paper to the exact size of the square at the top of the box and laid the cotton candy in. And now it's the perfect bed to lay the necklace on top. I want to lay you down on a bed of cotton candy. In honor of Valentine's Day, I'm holding a contest over on my second channel, Step by Step. You can win this month's Sprinkle Some Love Sprinkle Medley along with a cake book. Here's how you do it. Head over to my Step by Step video using the link in the description below. This feels weird with this left hand. And leave a comment on that video saying something sweet to someone you love with the hashtag Sprinkle Some Love. Now remember, all comments using the Sprinkle Some Love hashtag need to be on that video so use the link below. We'll let you know if you've been chosen as the lucky winner. Lastly, it's our anniversary month here at How To Cake It. It's been five years of cakes, and Ooh. to celebrate, we are gonna throw a blowout sale every week. So you'll wanna keep tabs on those sales at howtocakeit.com. For more awesome cakes, make sure to click here and here.